Hey folks, Quill18 here, back with another part of our Unity 3D slash Blender tutorial on how to make some destructible geometry. In the last episode, we added, we created a cube in Blender. This is a cube that we designed in Blender. It's not very exciting, but it's ours. And uh, so we brought it into Unity. Now it's kind of a little boring and it looks a little funny. And uh, what we really need to do is add a texture to this. So we're going to go right back into Blender, right over here. And we're going to look to add a texture to this cube to make it a little bit more interesting. So the um, couple of things we're going to do, the first thing we, we're going to do is down here, we're going to switch to texture view. You can do this. If you hit Z, it'll go to wireframe. If you hit Z again, it'll go to solid and it'll alternate between those. But if you do Alt Z, then it'll bring you into texture view and you get this sort of like flat white kind of looking thing that is uh, terrible. That's because we haven't added a texture to it yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to split our view in two by grabbing this little corner here and just dragging it off to the side. And then the left view, I'm going to take it and I'm going to switch to the UV image editor from the pop-up menu here. So the reason is we're going to, we want to add a, a texture to this, but it doesn't know where a texture is just an image. It's just a flat JPEG or ping or bitmap or whatever you want to use that you made in Photoshop. And we're going to apply to the cube, but by itself, our 3D applications don't know how it's supposed to be applied. Um, you can think of our texture as wrapping paper. And this is a gift box that we have. Well, how do you wrap the paper around the box? Um, you know, there's, there's a, there an infinite number of ways to do it. Uh, and it's even more complicated on the computer. So what we have to do with the UV mapping is we are telling the, um, we are telling the 3D application how to our, apply our texture to our model. So the first thing we're going to do, make sure, um, for this, I actually like to work with the face selection mode down here. So now I can select face. I'm going to hit A to deselect everything. And now I can click and select entire faces. I'm going to hit A to, again to deselect, hit A a second time to select all. And with that, with everything selected, now I'm going to go back over to UV mode and I'm going to load an image into Blender. Um, I'm going to go to the image menu, hit open image. And I have to navigate to, oh, I just realized I don't have my, uh, I don't have my image in the right place. So just hold one moment, please. I gotta bring this up, destructible geometry, assets, and I'm just gonna paste an image in here. So I've already got uh, this building block image that I used for my game. So now that I've, I've got this texture that I put together in, in Photoshop, now I can go into image, I can open image, and there's my building block texture. So I'm gonna select that, and you'll be able to see what it looks like. So it looks a little funny here. Uh, let me deselect everything here. This row here represents the windows of my buildings, the sort of office building glassy kind of look. If I go back over into my game and let me reset the level here, you can see my building clearly, you know, it kind of looks like an office building and that's that texture that I drew. Um, if I go to one of the shorter ones and go on top of the, uh, the roof, you can see that it's just sort of like this flat, can I not make this jump? There we go. This flat kind of concrete, uh, it's a little bumpy because I've got it applied as a bump map later on as well. But um, but that's that. So if we flip back into Blender, you can see that. You can see the um, the, the windows, and then you can see it's just sort of concrete -y kind of texture everywhere. Now, we've applied that to our cube at this point, and obviously it doesn't look right. And the reason is it's just sort of every one of our faces is getting the whole image applied to it and stretched, right? So the top the side and it just it doesn't look right but if we save this and we flip back into unity it'll import our model it'll pull in the texture and there it is again it doesn't it doesn't look right not not at all but it's there so what we need to do is we need to tell our 3d apps how it should be applying the texture to the side uh, and there's a lot of different ways to do this personally for this particular type of um of image what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the end cap and I'm going to select this side here by holding shift and then right clicking on the second one. I'm going to hit U and unwrap. And you can see over here on the left hand side, you can actually see the end cap is mapped to right here and this side is mapped to right here. You could also see that the textures changed on there when I unwrapped it. If I select both, I've got them both here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move their UV mapping area by hitting G for grab. I'm going to hit Y to lock it to the Y axis and bring it up. And you can see the windows are showing up on the side. So I'm going to line it up 
to be about here. I'm going to hit A to deselect. I'm going to hit B to box select. Grab the top row vertices here. Hit G and Y again. And get it about there. You know, I'm kind of doing a quick rough job, and then we can tweak it later on if things are not quite right. So that that's pretty good. Let's do the other side. Do the same thing. I'm going to select both these sides. Hit U. Hit unwrap. Select all. Grab. Lock to the Y axis. And lock to the Y axis. Like that. There we have it. In fact, I probably should have done it slightly differently. You know what? Let's not let's not fuss over it. Now I'm going to do the top and the bottom. I'm going to hit U, unwrap, and again I've got a sort of two two bits there. I'm going to grab. You can see them. There's two squares. I'm just going to grab the top one by mousing over where the vertice is and hitting L. It's just going to select the top one, or that might be the bottom. Either either, either way. Now I'm just going to slide it down so it's just. It's only covering the concrete itself. And now our block looks well, pretty much the way that I want. I can save this again. I can flip back to Unity. And you know we're looking pretty solid. Now there is one funny behavior. If we get in here, I'm not sure if it'll be quite as visible now that it's textured. Yeah, but um, the way, oh yeah, there's no, <laughs> there's no collision box so I can walk right through. Um, Right now, by default, when you pull in a model from Blender, the, the edges are considered to be relatively smooth, the way the lighting is. If this wasn't textured, if this was just a flat color, it would be more obvious. But there, it looks, yeah, you really can't tell here, but you have to believe me that the edges are a little bit off. Actually, I, can, I, I know how I can prove it to you. I'm going to take my building block, I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate it, and I'm going to bring one up three. Now I've got them stacked on top of one another. You'll be able to tell is that the lighting is not right between the two of them. Um, you can see where the two of them are touching, and it, just, it doesn't look right, and there's like these weird shadows. And it's because by default, these cubes are, are, have smooth edges. And there's a couple of ways to, to, to correct that. Uh, you can collect, correct it in Blender. I'm going to not do that quite yet. What I'm going to do instead is in my assets here in the model, I'm going to go for the normals and tangents. I'm going to switch the normals to be calculated. And I'm going to apply that. And that's going to fix it. So now it's got sharp, crisp edges. And you can no longer see the seam between the blocks because everything, everything is flat the way it's supposed to be. There's not supposed to be a seam. There's not supposed to be a kind of a bulge in the middle here. This is a perfectly flat wall. And now everything looks exactly the way we want. Um, I'll talk about a little bit more about the normals and edges maybe a little bit later. But for now, this is a great way. Most of the time, most of the, uh, the geometry, the simple geometry that you're going to pull in from Blender, that is the way to, uh, to deal with it. Hey folks, Quill18 here, back with another episode of our Unity 3D and Blender tutorial on how to make sort of destructible geometry. Um, we've, uh, we've just brought in our cubes, our, our building blocks, and uh, we've got a couple of them here to show. I'm going to delete the extra one. Now, there is something that is very important when you're working with models in Blender. These, these models, these meshes, you don't want to add them to the world directly. Um, I mean, there's, there's kind of caveats and explanations that I, I can give you, but generally speaking, you just you don't want to do that. Um, what you want to do is you want to nest them inside of another object. And there's, there's it's complicated, well, somewhat complicated reasons related to rotation. And if I take this guy, for example, and I rotate him, and then I hit play, oh, that does stay, but that's because it actually is nested here in the prefab. It's not, yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm... <clears throat> hey folks, Quill18 here, back with another episode of our Unity 3D and Blender tutorial on how to make destructible geometry. Um... Hey folks, Quill18 here, back with another episode of our Unity 3D and Blender tutorial on how to make destructible geometry inside of Unity. So we've got our blocks, we've got them simply textured, and that's great. Now we're going we're gonna to tweak our, our setup a little bit here, and we're going to start playing with physics a tiny bit. I'm going to get rid of one of the extra blocks, and the building block that we have here, we just, we just put it in directly from our, 
from, from the model that we brought in from Blender. Generally speaking, it's not a great idea to work that way. And uh, there's several reasons for it, but a lot of it has to do that if we wanted to, for example, if I'm going to go here and add some physics components to this block, like um, a collision box and a rigid body component so that it's physics enabled, well, later on, if I have to change this model, I'm basically going to destroy this whole prefab, lose all that setup, including any scripts I may have attached to it, and that's no good. So what you want to do is you want to nest your, your visible model inside of another game object. And then you attach all your components to that outer game object and you just have the model inside of it. That way if you want to swap the model you can do it very, very painlessly. So we're going to go ahead and create an empty game object. And this I'm going to use a different capitalization for it. It's the sort of setup I generally do. I use this sort of what's called camel case for my actual prefabs and then for my um, my raw objects like my models and textures, I usually do the lowercase with uh, underscores. That's that's just my personal thing. Um, it keeps keeping me organized, but you can use any method you want as long as you keep track of it. So we're going to stick the building block model inside of the building block object. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that the building block model is centered inside of my object. There we go. And then my object we're going to place you know, on the ground. Then we can move it around wherever we want, and that's fine. And that's great. And I'm going to drag this into my assets. Again, normally I would make subfolders for all these things. I'd have a prefab folder, a models folder, but this is going to be a simple enough project that's going to be fine. So now we've got this as a prefab, which is excellent. And on the prefab, I can do things like, let's say we're going to add a, uh, a box collider and a rigid body, which we have over here. You can see the box collider and rigid body. And um, while I want to make these changes to the prefab, I'm going to do it from here. You can see the, the box collider just barely kind of ghosting through. Obviously, it's very small. We need to resize this to match our, our actual model. Now, we happen to know that it's 9 in the X, 3 in the Y, 3 in the Z. And because the, uh, the rigid body is centered on the transforms coordinates, we have to bring it up by 1.5 units. And now it's nicely centered on the box. I'm going to hit Apply to save those changes to the prefab. And now if I hit play, I will no longer be able to walk through the box. And in fact, I should be able to, yeah, I should be able to jump on the box. There we are, except I can't jump high enough. But if I could, then it would be fine. So that, that's step one. The second thing, uh, oh, we've already got a rigid body attached to it, which is great. So now if I took this and put it up in the air and maybe gave it a little bit of a, a little bit of a rotation here and hit play, we're gonna see it's gonna thump, thump down. Excellent.